Good morning. Was thinking about the Higgs boson. And so the Higgs boson, it's so the whole universe is uh, composed of a field. So with electromagnetism, we start with something that's called the uh, uh, the electric sea. Uh, so you imagine it like a, an ocean that's made out of electrons, and it's made out of uh, bunches of uh, piles of electrons. That think of if you know a spherical object, pretend the electron is spherical, and it's a bunch of them stacked in uh, you know flat layers all the way up to the top, or maybe it's like a, a, a a ball pit, basically. So think of a ball pit, I guess. And uh, the idea with electrons is that um, you can create, an, uh, if you put enough energy there, you can create another one on top of that, and it's sitting above the electron C, and that's what a uh, um, ant, uh, anti-electron, a positron is. And if you pull an electron out, uh, or no, I'm sorry, the one on top is the electron, you pull one out and that's the, the positron or the holon, uh, depending on uh, your perspective in, in uh, you know, uh, in solid state physics, they use holons instead of positrons, almost the same idea. Anyway, um, now if you think, you transfer that over to gravity. Now the Higgs field is high energy all the time. So think of, uh, you're not at a, a, a zero point, you're not at a neutral point. Uh, everything is maximized to the positive. So, um, we're at a ceiling. Uh, we can't put more energy into any spot in the universe. Um, every every spot is at max energy and full of uh, virtual photons. It's like the ball pit if the ball pit goes all the way to the ceiling. The only way to put another object in is to take one out. Uh, so uh, and. This kind of works because you have both the virtual and the the, the real. So, uh, for instance, you have uh, if you want to create an object at a, at a location, you know, an example, you have two photons, they're um, gamma rays, and the thing with photons is they're all moving at the speed of light. They can only move the one speed. So, how do they uh, communicate that they have more energy? How do they store that energy? Is by going back and forth as they race forward at the speed of light, just like if you watch race car drivers when the uh, when they are on a uh, what's that the pace car is out, a lot of the drivers will zigzag back and forth. That's because they can actually they're actually increasing the amount of road surface that they're covering um, in the same way that uh, like how our brains rumple so they get more surface area just uh, compressed into a smaller space. Same thing that they're uh, on, along the roadway, they're getting more roadway compressed into a smaller space. Same thing with the, uh, the photon that is communicating more energy going back and forth within that spa same uh, rate of travel. So now you have these two things zigging, zigging back and forth really fast and they're also heading towards each other at the speed of light. They collide and annihilate and they form an electron and a positron, and they both go off in different directions. So in order to create the electron at a location, the same with the, 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 the positron, you have to displace one of the balls in that ball pit that goes to the ceiling. So you can put the electron up there against the ceiling. Now, uh, this displaces that Higgs boson that was there out of its location in the virtual sea and out into the real universe, which is, I guess, above the ceiling. And so um, this whole time, the same thing with uh, quarks, you know, uh, other leptons and baryons, everything that experiences mass. So this whole time, these are uh, going to have a Higgs or more, you know, maybe several Higgs if it takes a lot of energy, if they have to occupy many locations. And these Higgs uh, stick to the outside. Like, uh, and, and the other part of it is, these are uh, negative Higgs particles. And uh, the electron or quark that they're stuck to is positively, um, I'm sorry, a negative gravitational charge. And the uh, quark or electron is positively charged. And the whole field is positively charged. So they're stuck to this thing like a fridge magnet moving through molasses. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's like having a, uh, yeah, like having a fridge magnet that's stuck to a piece of iron and you're moving the whole thing through a large magnetic field, it's gonna, yeah, like a magnet going uh, down a copper tube. You've seen those on other YouTube channels, I'm sure. So that's how uh, it, 
expresses that's how the concept of mass is expressed out of energy is from the uh, Higgs being stuck to it and moving around like molasses and of course uh, the quarks are communicating back and forth with the electron through virtual photons and so that's also uh, being communicated back and forth and that's only going to the speed of light all of this can only happen at the speed of light and that's why the uh, uh, speed of light is the limiter uh, you know we can only move at some uh, divider divisor of the, the speed of light which the divisor uh, has to do with the number of interactions that have to occur all the virtual photons back and forth between all of the electrons and quarks in a physical object that limits how fast it can move uh, in space-time and so the real root of the question is how do the Higgs bosons cause black holes so what must be occurring is that if you get enough Higgs boson or um, Higgs particles at the same location they can actually start to uh, reduce your, if you pull enough balls out of the ball pit, you'll get enough of them that are out above and they're negatively charged and they can start to create a field that pulls more of the positively charged ones out. And it starts to pull the matter out with it too. And um, this creates a negative field. And uh, once you get to a critical mass, you don't have any field left. So everything can just fall in and you have a negative spot in the middle of the uh, positive field where all the positive stuff just falls in, I think.